Hey, Ian. This is uh, a Fusion 360, how I make everything, basically. Um, let's say I want to make a pair of calipers or something. Here's what I'll do. Mm. I'll start here and build a sketch. And from the top down, I might uh, say I need a very long rectangle. Maybe I want a 100 millimeter. Um, no, 200 millimeter long caliper. So I'll just draw a rectangle and I'll say it's about, um, yeah, about 15, no, about 10 across. So then um, we'll say we want some teeth on that thing. It's got teeth after all. So we say that the teeth might come out like that and then have an angle like, um, let's say, 85 degrees here. No, I'll just make it 80. We'll say 25 mm and point it like that. Then that comes down to some kind of toothy thing here. Um, so that looks like it comes down at 45. I'm just eyeballing what mine is doing. So you see now it will just follow uh, whatever once I hit that it blocks it and I can tab back and forth between these numbers so I'll just say um, 4mm here and then I will uh, hit L again and do a line that goes all the way back here I'll lock it at 90 Boom. So, now there's a little notch cut out at the base of the teeth. Take a look at that. And it kind of goes like, um, let's see. I do an L again. From here. Now I can use the trim command to cut out the parts I'm not using, you see. And now I could use the mirror command to mirror all these lines. And then I pick the mirror line here. And I can pick this. Won't well, let me actually pick the mirror line. Okay, fine. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to draw this construction line here. I'm going to highlight all these lines and pick um, mirror here. And I'm going to pick this as the mirror line. And then hit OK. Now we're done. Now this thing automatically knows when shapes are closed here. I could go through the extra thing of saying coincident uh, this to this here. Over constrained. Oh, well, never mind. Over constrained. Okay, anyway, so I have the front teeth of the caliper here. Um, this one should actually be on its own layer because it um, is not actually part of the caliper, uh, the top slide of the caliper. And there's the whole back tooth assembly too, which is uh, a little different. But um, you can see where I'm going with this here. I pick a face like this and uh, this one is attached to the top here and I'll pick uh, extrude. Now I'll say it's about four millimeters thick. I mean, that's what I think it is anyway. Nah, it's about like three. So I'll hit, okay, it's a new body now. Um, but now there's this recess here 
that goes here and goes down at an angle, making a uh, cutting tip, the very tip of the tool. So I'm going to engrave that in. So I'll do is I'll create a new sketch, except I'll pick this top face here as the reference point for the sketch. And I'll pick where I want the line to go here. I'll draw it to this edge. I'll draw it to this edge. And so you see these T-shaped things here. These are perpendicular constraints. So you know that this is perfectly square. So um, then next step is um, I will pick this here and I'm going to do a draft angle. Well, actually, I'm going to take these two here and I'm going to pick um, Project Include and intersect them with this here. I think. I think that's how it works. Otherwise, it's actually project into this here. Let's see, if I go hide the sketch. Nope, did not work. Project the surface. How about that? Face. Curves. This one and this one. And uh, about faces. Let's turn off the view of the sketch and pick the body face. No, it doesn't like that. It absolutely doesn't like it. Okay, fine. Um, we'll try something else here. Wonder if I can draft this here. Screwed revolve sweep loft rib. Rib rib. Oh, that's interesting. Web. Nope. Emboss. Here, here's what I'm going to do then. I'm going to say, let's create another sketch here. Create a sketch. I'm trying to create a sketch. I think it's like freezing. Oh, I'm still in a sketch. Okay, we're going to create a sketch here. Then I'm going to pick this point here and run it down to this diagonal. And then um, I'm going to finish the sketch. I'm going to construct a plane through two edges. I'm going to pick this one and this one here. Okay, two selected. Now I'm going to create another sketch on this plane here and pick a rectangle that goes from here to here. Now I'm going to take this rectangle, I'm going to extrude it and it's going to cut. See, I can choose intersect, cut, and join. But I want to cut here. And I just cut that chunk out like that. Bam. 
So there's your little sharp tip. Uh, another thing I can do here is go back and edit the original extrusion, and if I think it's too thick, I can hit OK, and then this becomes shallower because I edited the sketch here, the diagonal changed, therefore the construction plane changed, therefore my rectangle changed, therefore the extrusion changed. So watch this, if I edit the feature again and go down to say half of a millimeter, bam, see the angle of this changed too. So this is pretty spiffy what it can do. Uh, suppose I want to change any other feature, I could always go back to sketch number one oops, and edit it and say I want to bring this in here I can say hit move uh, why is that gap gapping itself? Is the length of this line specific? How about we lock down this angle here? We'll lock down these lines. So now I can move that, and whenever I hit Finish Sketch, it'll reflect it. So what this does is it records a series of operations down here at the bottom, and I can go back and edit any one of the steps or sketches involved. Um, for instance, if I'm in a sketch here and I want to um, control some of the dimensions, I can do this. Um, so this is 4 here. Um, I can make a dimension from, say, here to this line. And since it's already constrained, I can get this calculate dimension here. Um, but if I get rid of this, I get rid of that, I can hit D here and do a dimension like this. Now this is a number I can adjust. I could say it's 3 now and push that out. So you see if I say it's 4 it pushes it out further. Now what's happening? Um, so I've constrained this dimension here. Now suppose I kill this dimension but I want to say uh, this angle is fixed here by virtue of the fact that um, it's specified like this. I will say dimension this to this here. Now I can say, well, this is going to be 9 mm. So what's it going to do? It's going to adjust the direct, you know, the, the distances here involved. But um, uh, I want this here to be locked. So I'm going to lock that. Well, eh, let's see if I can still adjust it. No, I can't. I'm trying to give it the get it to shove the whole thing over actually. In which case I actually want my distance to be from here to this line. I'll give that say 10 mm. And it elongated the line in order to uh in order to do it instead of shifting the whole thing over. That's a little sideways, but uh, it is what it is. Let's see, how about 8mm? Now let's lock this line here. And let's try to adjust this now. 
There, now it's doing what I want. It, it has to pick a dimension to adjust, honestly. What are all these? Oh, this is the mirror constraint. So whatever happens to one side has to happen to the other side. I see. So now if I adjust this, nothing will change on the other side, probably. We'll say 5 mm. See, nothing changed on that side. So we'll say 7 mm. Uh, so with an under constrained sketch you can get some janky results, but uh, you can see it's data driven. I could, for instance, say that um, this dimension here, whenever I hover over it, is called D11, 4 millimeters. I could say this is uh, D11 times 1.75, and then I get 4. Now I change this here, and I say it's 10, and I get 17. And so you see I can drive one dimension with another. I could use all sorts of math to uh, adjust things as I see fit. I could say that um, this angle is half of D1. I can change D1 to be like 60 or something and see what I get. How about 100? Whatever that does. That's goofy. So, anyway, within the laws of geometry, uh, you can have all kinds of fun with this program. Uh, not only that, I could say choose to revolve this around this axis here and get some funny geometry here. I can hit OK. It's a new body. And then I can go over here and say put a hole right here. And I can even say it's a countersink hole. You know, um, so I can size it for custom screw here, you know. Um, I can make it threaded if I want to. Taper tap. Uh, well, I can do countersinking here. Where there's an angle. Need to reset home. So um, this can do a myriad of different things. Um, I can say do a fillet on this edge here and round it. So now the edge is, is round. But if I want to say I could do I'm gonna do a press pull here and bring this out or bring it in to a certain degree so that I've eaten right through the hole. Oh, it didn't like that. Never mind. Uh, another thing I can do is a chamfer. Uh, where'd that go here? A chamfer just cuts a diagonal corner here. So, anyway, fun things. Um, shelling would actually make this shape hollow. That looks weird. Well, that's not what I expected at all. I don't even know what to make of that. But anyway, um, I think I've adequately demonstrated, though, uh, that this thing can do a bunch of stuff. And so whenever I have a program like uh, the Gram Scale Lid here, there's a lot more going on in this one. There's a lot of different sketches here that I use to create all the different extrusions and shapes that go along with it.
and it all started with just measuring and taking notes and uh, I can hide all the sketches and it becomes a little easier to look at. I showed them all so I could send a, a flashy screenshot to someone earlier. I'll hide these sketches. And so you can see the whole design here. I modeled the base just so I had a reference. Um, see I got this joint here which I can use to simulate the movement of one part versus another and the constraints backwards honestly for some reason that part moves and the lid doesn't but anyway and I edit this one here oh and it turns the entire assembly for whatever reason so uh, let's edit this one instead Yeah, so uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a busy program, a lot of fun to learn, I think, and uh, you can do lots of stuff with it. So when I'm done and I want to get the model out of it, I just go over to here. Um, I pick a body that I want to export, like this one here, and I save as an STL. And this little screen comes up. I hit save. I got Graham Scale Cap version 5 here. I do that. And I open up Cura. And I import it and slice it. So I'll open up Graham Scale Cap. Uh, you can't print it like this, so what I do is I pick the object and click rotate to the back and then I lay it out like this and then I will say then choose to rotate it again because I like things oriented up and down the length of the bed <sighs> um, I can do a preliminary slice here I hit preview and so you can see that uh, the slice creates all this uh, bridging material here uh, that helps print upside down parts. But I actually only need that material for um, just this overhang here, which is where the, the weight is stored. Everything else doesn't need that. So what I'm going to do, oh, and this uh, these tabs here, these underhangs here, they need it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create exclusion zones, like here, and here, and here. I'm going to go um, change the size of this. This is going to do something freaky, because it's already rotated on its side. So it's going to do that, and then I'm going to just move it over a little bit. Now I got a couple more to place. Put one right here. And another one right there. So now that these are here, let's go place them properly. And now we have to configure these solids, um, these squares. They're going to modify how the supports are generated here, the way that you'll see in just a moment. So now what we do is we go over to this tap panel right here, and you can say print as support. You can say print as over, you know, modify overlaps normal model but we're going to use don't support overlaps so we're not generating supports for these uh, sections of the model here but we want to make sure we still have support for these overhangs here so now whenever I slice oh 
because this does not fit within the build volume. Here, we'll do it now. So you can see it's not building supports here. And so this is like the notch for the lid to latch into over here. And this is the pivot for the lid over here, this recess. The buttons go in these grooves here and here. And the scale goes in this groove. But under here, this is the support material. And when I say support material, I mean like um, it attaches to the model so that you can print the overhangs, but not in such a way that prevents you from um, removing it. So what you'll see here is there's this mesh structure that builds up. This is the support itself, and then this is a support interface, which is this hash grid of mesh. But before it actually touches the surface here, you'll see that it pulls away from the edge of the model a little bit. So that it's not quite stuck to it. And then um, you'll see also over here we have more support material and you'll be able to see the effect a bit clearer. So you can see where it's actually kind of not touching the model over here. But it, it is because, you know, the plastic kind of rests on it. It supports the overhang. So then I would save this to a file here and get the G-code. And I stick it on a little SD card and stick it in the printer and then pull up the file and say print it. That's really all there is to it. Um, it's pretty uh, it's pretty straightforward. I like it. So that's that's a walkthrough of how this whole thing works.